If you play a Warhammer long enough, inevitably you will end up with a large box of unloved marines covered in dust and several layers of nearly unstrippable pain. They are plastic martyrs who have died so that other armies could go on to live better lives with thinner base coats. Usually they dwell in the shadows of dark shoe boxes, beneath furniture, or tucked away in attics or garages between crates of PS2 games, direct-to-DVD Disney sequels, and school yearbooks. They are often forsaken for sports, music, love, or other passions that are objectively less useful than 40k, they are the damned of this world. And today, we're going to paint them that way. Rise, my little phoenixes. Dwell in dark boxes no longer. Be reborn by the light of the damned. Legion of the Damned are the only Loyalist Space Marine chapter I give a shit about. With the exception of Iron Hands, because I really like the flesh is weak as a mantra. Their lore is sick, they're ghost marines, and they have a color scheme that I feel like hasn't been visited in a while. And even though I love the original uh, Flaming Skull design from the 90s, I feel like they're probably due for a modern revision. I am one of the few Warhammer players that never actually played Space Marines. I found orcs, I liked them immediately, I never felt a reason to ever try playing anything else. They're the best, they're never beaten, why would you? But I feel like painting a Space Marine is a milestone that after 16 years of playing Warhammer, it's probably finally due. I'm pretty sure this is actually the first group of Space Marines I've ever painted, not counting orcs wearing Space Marine armor. I got these from a friend who stopped playing in the late 2000s, and I think they're kind of cute. So today we're gonna give them a makeover and pray that someday tactical Marines become worth running again. I started off by trying to scrape off all the mold lines and cut off a bunch of their heads for superior spooky flaming skull heads, because I mean is it really Legion of the Damned if there isn't at least one model per unit with their head on fire. I sculpted the flames by making thin, long little tubes of milliput and then sticking them together. Um, if I were you, I would use green stuff though. I feel like milliput isn't that good for this purpose. Green stuff is naturally really smooth and milliput is not until you smooth it with water. Milliput is closer to actual clay, which is why I like it more for sculpting most of the time. But for these purposes, I think green stuff is the way to go. Or you could just sculpt them in ZBrush and 3D print a bunch of them because we live in the year 2020. I rebased them with base adapters from this guy in the UK uh, whose name I forget. I will find them and place a link in the YouTube description if you want base adapters though. They're the best I've used so far. After I got all the adapters glued on, I based them. I almost gave them goblin green bases, but I feel like that defeated the point of making them more modern looking. But I was wrong. Um, but you should always give your models goblin green bases. It is official GW corporate policy to do so. After that, I primed them all with an airbrush. I like using Vallejo Black Airbrush Primer. It's a lot thinner than what you get from using a spray can. I decided to use three of the more basic basic bitch looking marines. He uses test models and painted them separately from the rest which I batch painted. For this first one I gave him a dry brush of bulk and metal followed by a brass scorpion. I think this would work better for something like iron hands but it was too bright for what I was going for and ultimately ended up giving him a really thick black wash to cover most of it. I also painted the Aquila and all the purity seals he had with wraith bone which I would also later go back and wash most out of because I thought it was too bright. For test model number two I started again with bulk and metal but went a lot lighter this time and then followed that up with a color that I bought by accident. That color is Dawnstone Dry. I almost never use dry paints because uh, I like just dry brushing the old way more. If you need a miniature painting, the old way is just to waste uh, roughly one half of every paint container that you buy by scraping it off onto a newspaper. I'm a very wasteful, reckless person and it fits my lifestyle much more. But I had a lot of fun with this dry paint and I'm definitely going to start using them more. Then applied a bunch of decals to the shoulder pads and some of their knee pads and back of their legs. I got these from a uh, local model kit store, and I have no idea what they're from, but the manufacturer is called Simp, and I think that's very funny. I'm pretty sure they're from some Gundam offshoot, but also there's a Punisher logo on there, so I have no idea. I brushed liquid decal film onto all the areas that the decals are going to go onto. Um, this stuff helps a lot with making decals that are uh, going onto curved surfaces actually stick to them. I then applied a setting solution, which is the red one on the left. Basically, it helps remove a lot of the air bubbles and wrinkles that you you'll get when you put on decals and uh, helps even more with making them stick to curved surfaces. I was feeling pretty good about the color scheme as a whole at this point, so I started moving on to airbrushing, starting with a base coat of a fist in red. I think investing in an airbrush for a miniature painting is really worth it, but if you can't have one for living conditions or uh, you just don't want to deal with one, for the next few steps, you could apply thin layers of watered down highlights instead. It'll take you way longer, but if you're patient, you might be able to get a similar result. And here's some footage of me airbrushing the model accidentally out of frame. I applied a layer of Mephiston red mixed with Wild Rider red. And just like normal highlighting, make sure to leave some of the darkest color underneath. That way as you gradually paint up brighter and brighter, you'll get a gradient effect so that it looks uh 
cool. After that was dry, I repeated the same process, this time only applying Wild Rider Red. And after that was dry, I started applying some highlights using Sunburst Yellow. I wanted this boy to look like he was glowing. So I tried to focus on mostly like around the eyes, uh, his little muzzle triangle mouth, and any areas that I felt like would be absorbing more of the light that was coming from his triangle mouth and eye area. Uh, I could have for sure done a better job paint stripping these. You can see there's like weird defects in the shoulder pads and parts of their head. I feel like it adds a lot of character to the Legion of the Damned though. And I think I actually prefer them this way. A big part of modeling with eBay rescues or other people's very abused older models is for me at least, is learning to accept the imperfections as a part of their history. It adds charm and reminds me of where they came from. I used watered down Mephist and Red to go through some of the shadowy areas that I thought were too bright. But basically at this point, I feel like I had the look and that I was ready to move on to painting the rest of the squad with the same method. I painted the exhaust jets on his backpack the same way I painted his face, just as if there was something interesting to look at on the back too. For everyone else in the squad, I waited till the very last step to do this, but I used some dark steel weathering powder to add little chips everywhere. If you don't have weathering powder, you could uh, definitely just use like Vulcan metal or maybe a slightly brighter metallic color to do the same thing. And carefully apply with a dry brush or if you want to do edge highlighting. It's a pretty subtle effect, but if you do a side-by-side -side comparison, you can really see the difference. The marine on the left has weathering powder and the one on the right has nothing. When not in working with weathering powders, uh, they'll rub off if you play with the models a lot. And the way to get around that is to apply a coat of matte varnish after you put the powder on. The problem with the matte varnish though is that it makes the powder look less noticeable. It like really dulls the effect. So the best way I've found to get around this is to apply the weathering powder, then spray the model with matte varnish and then do more weathering powder after building it up in little layers. I forgot, but I guess at some point I used a uh, modeling oil color to add some stains. They're very subtle stains, but if you see like around the bottom of the gun and near his elbow, there's like a little bit of brown in there. And I mostly just added them so that he didn't feel like a, a solid gray mass. A tiny bit of a secondary color on big blocky chunks that are mostly the same color goes a long way. And if you don't have oil paints, you can use watered down brown of your choosing, or maybe even like Agrax Earthshade could work here. I repeated the same process for the rest of them. For all the guys with flaming skull heads, I tried to focus highlights on the cheekbones and forehead ridge, and a little on the armor for reflections. I also wanted to paint the special weapons of anyone in the squad who had one, just to make them stand out. For this guy, I tried freehanding a subtle fire effect. I wanted to give them lava bases without having the lava be distracting from the rest of the glowing areas. So to make it look different, um, I started with a base coat of my fist and right again, but made it like really really watered down. If you do this it'll pull into all the crevices just like a wash would. And after that was dry I did the same thing except with Wild Rider Red. It's still really thin but way less water than the first time. And then to distinguish it from the rest of the glowing areas, instead of using yellow, I mixed a tiny bit of white with Wild Rider Red. This gives it a slightly pink tone instead of the same bright orange hue that we have on the face. And for the lava rock itself, I just dry brushed a tiny bit of the same gray I used for the armor mixed with dried bark. Before I put on the weather powder, but after I done everything else, I used a plain old pencil to have little graphite scratches around the edges of the armor plating and anywhere else I thought there'd be battle damage. One of the reasons I want to do this before applying the weathering powder is because now when you put the weathering powder on, it'll like smear the graphite around a little bit and create a slightly softer effect. If you don't want a softer effect, um, you could probably do the graphite after or just be more careful when you're applying the powder. To be honest, growing up, I just, I always, I fucking hated Space Marines. They would get like a million new models every year, which I guess hasn't really changed that much, but also I just didn't really like how they look. In basically any game I play, I usually gravitate towards monster characters, specifically green ones, I, I don't really know why. But yeah, in a universe where I could be anything, I don't, I don't know why I would choose just to be a normal man in a big suit of armor. But in the age of Primaris Marines, I feel a kinship to tactical Marines and Marines of days gone by. For almost the entirety of the game, history, tactical marines were a certainty in Warhammer, and pretty often the safest horse to bet on in anyone's meta. But like the US market crash of 2007, the things we think are too big to fail can still always fail. The world's fastest horse can still break his legs. GW's most beloved sacred poster child can always get a bigger, younger brother and be completely forgotten overnight.
like those who rebased their entire Warhammer fantasy armies only to learn that most of the units from the old world would be discontinued within the next year. It sucks to put a ton of effort into something and then learn that the world is moving on without you. I understand game companies need to make money and I don't blame them for that either. I just I don't feel like it's sustainable long term. If you keep dangling new shiny things in front of people that replace the things they have, they'll eventually get burnt out and become tired of chasing them. Anyways, they were a villain I took for granted and now that they're not around so much anymore, I, I miss them. 18 points, two wounds, new codex, who knows, but you know. Probably not. I guess I mostly wanted to make this video as a way of pouring one out for the Batman to Orcs Joker, or probably more like Penguin or Riddler or some very minor character if we're being honest. The Tactical Marine is dead. Long live the Tactical Marine. But they will always now have a place in my heart, if nowhere else.